Good morning and welcome to today's lecture on fixed appliances. So in today's lecture, we will be looking at uh, the history of uh, fixed appliances. What are fixed appliances? What are the indications and contraindications of fixed appliances? And also we will know uh, the various components used in uh, fixed appliances. And we'll finish it off with uh, a few examples of different types of appliances used in orthodontics. And as for the learning outcomes, um, at the end of this topic, you should be able to summarize the indications and contraindications of fixed appliances, distinguish the various components used in fixed appliances, and also explain the basic principles of different techniques such as edgewise, back and pre-adjusted edgewise. So what are fixed appliances? So these are um, certain um, attachments which are fitted or fixed to the teeth by a trained operator which cannot be removed by the patient and are manipulated by the patient. These appliances have specific attachments which deliver force through arch wires and other auxiliaries. So one of the main components are brackets and uh, the other components such as elastics, bands, molar tubes and ligatures are all used uh, which help secure the arch wires to the brackets and the molar bands. So fixed appliances also have the ability to perform various tooth movements such as bodily movement, rotation, tipping, intrusion, extrusion, and root movements. So they also have the ability to treat a myriad of malocclusions such as class one with procline upper and lower incisors, class one with crowded anteriors, class two, both division one and two can be treated using fixed appliances. And also to a certain extent, you can treat class three malocclusions as well. You can treat cross bites, both anterior and posterior. You can also treat open bite and deep bite with fixed appliances. So coming to a brief history of, on uh, fixed appliances, it was Edward Angle who introduced Edgewise Appliance in 1928, almost a century ago. Following that, it was Raymond Beck who introduced the Beck Appliance back in 1950s, followed by Larry Andrews, who introduced the pre-adjusted edgewise appliance, which is also known as straight wire appliance in the 1970s. So what are some of the indications of a fixed appliance? So fixed appliances are indicated when precise tooth movements are required or are needed as part of orthodontic correction. So they also are used to correct mild to moderate skeletal discrepancies. When intrusion or extrusion of teeth are needed, fixed appliances come into play. Also for correction of any rotated teeth, correction of overbite by intruding the incisors and uh, fixed appliances can also uh, perform multiple tooth movements either in one arch or both arch simultaneously and also are used for active closure of spaces such as in hypodontia where there is generalized spacing and also uh, post extraction space closure. <clears throat> so fixed appliances can also be used to achieve better anchorage control uh, this is also used in combination with mini screws and certain other auxiliaries to enhance this anchorage. And also uh, in patients who are cooperative, who are compliant and are motivated. These are some of the indications for using fixed appliances. So coming to the contraindications, poor oral hygiene as such is not a contraindication. However, it is a pointer to let you know that this patient might have difficulties in maintaining a proper oral hygiene over an extended period of time. Uh, as you know, uh, orthodontic treatment takes anywhere between two to four years to complete. 
and during which time the patient has to maintain their hygiene meticulously, failing which they can be gingival recession, gingival inflammation, gingival enlargement, and uh, uh, periodontal uh, complications and periodontal pathology. So uh, if you see a patient who has poor oral hygiene, uh, you have to decide if uh, this particular individual is a suitable candidate or you have to take certain corrective measures to motivate the patient to maintain their oral hygiene better. Also, poorly motivated patients, again, is going to be an issue uh, because uh, the patient has to see an orthodontist for an extended period of time. Also, the patients have to uh, be... Uh, regular in their uh, reviews. They have to frequently come to the dental clinic for uh, uh, wire changes, for elastic changes, for certain other corrections. So there's a lot of things happening in orthodontic uh, uh, fixed appliance therapy. So the patient has to be compliant enough, especially wearing of elastics and all these things. So if a patient is not uh, motivated enough to, you know, uh, uh, see the final result or uh, stick to the routine, then such patients also uh, might have problems in completing their treatment or might lose interest uh, before the completion of treatment. Also, lack of fine motor skills and lack of manual dex uh, dexterity and poor manipulative skills. This is uh, something uh, which is true to uh, patients with special needs. If uh, there is someone who can actually help them out in their uh, oral hygiene maintenance, then that should not be a problem. So what are the components used? There are several components which come into play when uh, fixed appliances are placed on uh, patient's teeth. So basically these are brackets, bands and molar tubes, arch wires and also certain auxiliaries such as elastics, bracket ligatures, uprighting and torquing springs, wires and uh, such as uh, fixed uh, devices such as temporary anchorage devices or any other additional appliances which we might use for arch expansion. So these are some of the auxiliaries. So but the main components are the brackets, bands and molar tubes and also the arch wires and the ligatures which help secure the arch wires to the brackets. So here you can see um, on the image um, on the left hand side uh, the components placed on a patient's uh, teeth. So you can see the arch wire, you can see the bracket, you can also see a hook, you can see an elastic or a rubber band which is uh, stretching from one hook on the uh, upper uh, tooth to the molar uh, tube on the lower uh, tooth. You can also see a band which is cemented onto the tooth and you can see the ligature ties and these are called as modules or elastic ligatures and these help uh, secure the arch wires to the bracket. So um, basically these are the, the most commonly used uh, components in fixed appliance therapy. So when uh, bands and molars are to be used, you have a choice to either use a band, which is uh, a metal band, which is cemented um, onto the tooth using GIC. Uh, so these bands have uh, inbuilt hooks, which are soldered onto them, or you might uh, use uh, a more aesthetic or, you know, uh, easy to clean uh, tube which you can see on the image on the right hand side the lower right corner so these are bonded directly onto the tooth using composite so the brackets also come in different um, prescriptions and also they come as traditional metal brackets they can be uh, um, aesthetic options available such as ceramic brackets and there's also availability of self-ligating brackets which open and close by themselves in the sense uh, there's a small tiny keyhole which you can move up and down to open and close the bracket and it secures the wire in place so you don't need an elastic tie or a ligature or a metal ligature to tie the bracket 
uh, the arch wire into the bracket. So these are uh, some of the components used as well. And uh, the next component is the arch wires. So they come in different uh, materials such as stainless steel, nickel titanium, uh, cobalt chromium nickel and TMA that is titanium molybdenum. So arch wires are essentially the ones which cause the teeth to move around the bracket. So they can be of different dimensions, they can be of different shapes, round, rectangular and so on. Also, uh, you can see on the right hand side lower uh, corner image, uh, the criteria for an arch wire, they have to be tough, aesthetic, biocompatible, they need to have a good spring back, they need to have low friction which is extremely important so that you can close the spaces without much resistance. They should be weldable so that you can add uh, auxiliaries and attachments onto it. They have to be formable, especially stainless steel, wherein you can bend it. And they have to be resilient, that is nickel uh, titanium or nitinol, which is extremely elastic. It's called a super elastic. So you, that's how they help move or align teeth in different planes. So the next component is the elastics. These elastics come in different uh, colors, bright colors, different shapes, and they do different, they are, I mean, they have different functions. So the modules or ligatures are used to secure the arch wire to the bracket. As I told you, they come in all sorts of colors and the patient is usually given a, cho a choice to choose one or two random colors to their liking. And uh, we also use elastics such as separators. The image on the left uh, corner, lower uh, left corner, you can see these separators are used to open up space between teeth so that you can place a molar band. So you also have certain other elastics which are used to, you know, retract or protract teeth such as class two and class three elastics. They come in a diff different sizes, like one by eight, three by 16th of an inch, one quarter of an inch and so on. And we also use elastic chain or power chain, and they too have different sizes uh, and um, colors to it for easier identification. So these basically can help close certain spaces, finishing of midlines and so on. So box elastics is another uh, example of an elastic being used by a patient at home wherein they have to wear it in the prescribed fashion to close anterior open bite, to you know uh, pull teeth together, to provide a better intercuspation and so on. So the next component we use are uh, springs. So these springs can be open or closed, as you can see in the image. They also have different functions, whether to close the space or it depends on whether you're closing the space or you want to open the space. So you use different configurations of these springs. And you can also see a tad being placed uh, in the, uh, the, the right uh, corner image. So these uh, tads are usually made of nickel titanium. They are bicompatible and they are they provide additional anchorage. So now coming to the advantages and uh, disadvantages of fixed appliances. So what are the advantages? So they can um, help with uh, mo tooth movement such as bodily tooth movement. They provide precise 3D control of tooth movement. That is you can intrude, you can extrude, you can move the tooth, you can rotate in all three planes, all right? and it can also be used in complex malocclusions. It has, uh, however, high anchorage requirements. That is, you have to use uh, various configurations of anchorage to affect any tooth movement. Also, you have the ability to close space in a controlled manner. You can uh, do multiple tooth movements simultaneously, it can be used both in the upper and lower arches simultaneously, and also it's uh, very easy to use uh, fixed appliances to correct rotations along with the aid of uh, elastics and power chains. And uh, the most important thing is it's fully under the control of an orthodontist and it does not depend on the patient's compliance 
for wear because these are fixed to the teeth and any corrections are solely done by the orthodontist unless the patient breaks certain brackets or you know is extremely uh, careless in caring for their brackets otherwise most of the times uh, the compliance on side of the patient is to just maintain oral hygiene and uh, visit the dental clinic frequently so now coming to the disadvantages as we already discussed uh, oral hygiene can be problematic for patients to maintain over a long or extended period of time so this needs frequent uh, motivation and uh, uh, sort of education to the patient each visit they come you have to explain you have to educate them as to why is it important to maintain oral hygiene and so on so they will definitely need uh, frequent uh, visits to the periodontal um, uh, periodontist for uh, scaling and root planing at times and also any gingival excision which needs uh, management also uh, another thing is not all dentists or general dentists can attempt or can perform these uh, complex uh, maneuvers using these appliances so it needs an extensive training which is a full three to four years master's training in a recognized university and also uh, the orthodontist has to be a competent uh, individual who has the necessary skill set to perform these complex orthodontic movements. So coming to the Edgewise appliance, so these appliances were introduced by um, Edward ha uh, Angle in the um, 1920s and uh, he devised a metal bracket which had a rectangular uh, slot and uh, this slot received an arch wire which was rectangular in dimension as well so this had a horizontal slot in the bracket and uh, he could achieve uh, bodily movement using uh, these uh, appliances however there was a necessity to do certain wire bending to finish the final tooth position um, it can also uh, move the teeth in all the three planes it can up down it can tip the teeth and also it can uh, talk the teeth and also um, when it comes to uh, precision in tooth positioning it was not easily achievable as it needed a few finishing bends so finally this uh, was replaced by pre-adjusted edgewise systems However, Edgewise Appliance also had certain advantages. Uh, as uh, I've already mentioned, it could move the teeth in all the three planes of space. It had good control over tooth movement and also bodily movement of teeth was possible. Uh, however, for precision uh, movement, this is a sort of a disadvantage to using Edgewise. It needed certain finishing bends. Uh, also, there was need to apply heavy forces and uh, certain complex uh, wire bending to, you know, move uh, a certain teeth into their final positions. So these were some of the uh, advantages and disadvantages of uh, Edgewise appliance. So Beck, uh, that is Raymond Beck, basically modified the Edgewise appliance uh, and added. Uh, his own uh, technique and introduced the uh, uh, bike appliance which uh, had some differential uh, force technique so it uses uh, lighter forces and can uh, tip the teeth uh, using these uh, forces and also the bracket has a vertical slot in comparison to a horizontal slot uh, as used in uh, edgewise appliance uh, however these uh, brackets uh, and the archway had to be secured using brass pins. Mm, this uh, appliance um, had three stages of uh, treatment. Well, the first stage was to align the teeth, to correct the incisor and molar relationship, cross bite and any rotation. And then it was space closure and to maintain stage one corrections. And the final uh, stage involved the correction of inclination of teeth, that is to move the teeth procline, retrocline, tip them or else to do any kind of a root movement. So, so some of the advantages of big appliance include the use of light forces, 
and uh, these forces are usually within the acceptable physiological norms so this did not actually cause any uh, deleterious effects on the adjacent periodontal structures and the bone structures also relatively uh, uh, there was application of continuous uh, force on these teeth and um, the friction between the brackets and the arch wire was also uh, reduced so it was lawrence andrews who uh, devised and who uh, added additional features to an advice appliance and called it pre-adjusted advice appliance um, and he also called it a straight wire appliance it, it was pre-programmed in the sense that the brackets were having an average value for thickness tip and torque uh, unique to each uh, clinical crown also the slot sizes uh, were available in two dimensions and also the prescription was uh, later on changed by or uh, added on by uh, other authors such as Roth and also uh, MBT. So basically what you have to remember in fixed appliances uh, is there are different stages to the treatment of appliances, pre-orthodontic wherein you are doing certain extractions and then the active phase of orthodontics will involve the bonding of brackets and the placement of uh, molar tubes and also once the arch wire is in uh, the leveling and alignment of the arches then comes the overbite reduction or correction and then you will do the overjet reduction and uh, space closure uh, followed by uh, the final tooth positioning in uh, you know, working on the midlines, increasing or improving the intercuspation between various teeth and any other mild uh, rotations of teeth are taken care of. And uh, the last step will be to debond the fitted brackets. So that summarizes the whole uh, state, I mean, the different stages uh, of fixed appliance therapy. With that, we've come to the last slide of today's lecture. So basically, uh, we've covered uh, the indications and contraindications, brief history, and also various components and different types of appliance designs in today's lecture. So as they say, patience is a key that connects efforts to success. So this is 100% true when it comes to orthodontic treatment. A patient walks in with uh, a complex malocclusion and the orthodontist helps the patient overcome uh, his or her problem by drawing a treatment plan and executing the treatment plan. All these uh, requires patience, both on the patient side as well as the orthodontist side to achieve a favorable result. So with that, I'll leave you guys with a set of references uh, which you can um, refer back for more details. Thank you so much.